planting seeds of doubt in people's <laughs> minds about just things they've got coming up. Oh my god, you got into Berkeley? Congrats. Just hope you don't end up on East Campus. <laughs> What's on East Campus? This, this is what happened with Soylent, right? Oh, That's the other topic I wrote down. Seamless transition. But, but that seed of doubt of just like, oh, Soylent, yeah, it's a cool idea. It's a shame they're recalling all their products because people are getting sick and they don't know why. Oh, yeah, you randomly throw up sometimes. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I've got Soylent <laughs> bars, I've got the normal, and i got the coffee one. Look, the only requirement of Soylent is don't make me sick. Like... It's the only thing you, you had one job, so I went, right? Like, all right, let's clarify some stuff. First of all, they're only recalling the powder. Second of and all, and the bars, the bars. They, that's not a two of the three I products. I thought that was not an official that was recall. A voluntary recall, but gosh, you're voluntary recalling yeah. because everyone's throwing any out. recall is a total recall, in my here's, opinion. Here's what I understand correct me if I'm wrong. The deal is if you send it back to them and they will eat it, that's the point. They're gonna they eat everything you send back to them, and if they get sick, something, something. But so far, they have not gotten sick from anything that's been recalled. But they'll literally eat it? I had this situation yeah. last night. <laughs> First of all, who sounds ridiculous. Who's stomach for that? Second, <laughs> it's so I was bad. at a restaurant last night. Uh, I was at Dosa over on Fillmore. I ordered this, this dish. Came out. Uh, I ordered, a, I ordered like some salmon that they, that they had. It was so spicy. It was, un, it was uneatable, right? It was, I, I tried. got halfway through. And then I was at that point where like... Flaming Hot Cheetos bag number two, where it's like, I can't feel my tongue, right? Like, why did I get this for him? But I'm eating, I'm trying to eat healthy. I'm trying to eat thinking about tomorrow, the consequences. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was basically like, it was to the point where I drank water and my tongue is like stinging from water, which is like, how does that even happen, right? So it's terrible. And and so I sent, I sent it back. I was just like, hey, uh, she's like, hey, can I get you guys anything? You know, like the classic waiter question where you just say like, oh, it's fine. It's great. And I was like. I couldn't even breathe and she was like, is everything okay? And I was like, yeah, this is so spicy. I need you to, I, I need to get something else. And so she's like, okay, I'll, I'll take it away. No problem. So great service. At the end of the meal, the owner comes out and she was just like, Hey, sorry about the salmon. It, it was, it was really spicy. And I was like, how do you know that? And then she goes, well, we all ate it after you sent it back to see if it was really spicy. And I was like, you know what? Sounds fair. I see you nodding, but a <laughs> couple weird things happening there, right? First of all, kind of weird that you ate my food after I ate half of it. Right? I didn't believe you. Yeah, but second of all, are you calling bullshit on me? What would happen? Like, what would have happened if they didn't think it was that spicy? Would she come out and like, I don't know, charge me for it? Like, what were they really t like? Take my word for it. It's spicy. And then she she tried to recover. She was like, no, no, no. Uh, she's like, she she realized I didn't even say anything. She goes, we. She's like, we had it. We had, we had this, uh, we tried this, this, the sauce separately. And I was like, uh-uh. I know what you said. We ate it when you sent it back. Not only did you call bullshit, but you're telling me you called bullshit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it was a ridiculous situation. But I digress because for Soylent, I'm not impressed that they're going to eat all the Soylent that's making people sick. This guy's like a maniac anyways, just because it doesn't make you sick or whatever. Like, that's not the test of safety for me. That's not, it's not about them pointing out whether or not you're wrong or right. It's about them seeing like, okay, let's get a couple people to test things. Let's take a scientific approach and be like, let's be this, responsible this, about this our product. The scientific approach you know, is the, not, we eat it, the founders will eat it and see if it makes us sick. That's not the scientific approach, right? The, no, the, the, okay, uh... Yes, that is less scientific than what the science, fully scientific approach could be. It is way more scientific than what most companies do, which is take it, throw it away. When you have no idea what's happening, test it, do something with it. I don't know if they're actually eating it, by the way. I, they might be doing <laughs> other stuff too. But the point is like, I don't know. do it's, something with the product because if like... people are sending you stuff, you should, you should be trying to figure out why they're sending it to you. Sounded like you liked that response. I don't know. I, 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 like the response. Got worse for me. I think it's a clever response. Like when we, I saw their CMO give a talk at Sam Parr's event, HustleCon, and he you was love talking, this guy. I, well, the guy gave a great talk where he said you got to embrace what's weird about your brand, and so he put up a bunch of showed a bunch of billboards of we're pro GMO and stuff. And he's like, that's what we are. We're like this artificial food, um, and so how do companies, to your point, normally respond to this? Like they apologize, they recall. So let's say that we're gonna eat it. Like, right. that, like, there we go. <laughs> that, there's another Come part on, of my bro. brain that says, like, what uh, I, I've been watching Mad Men, and what Don Draper keeps on advising companies in controversy to do is you gotta change the conversation. And so, like, I wonder what would it be to completely change the conversation because saying that I'm gonna eat it brings the conversation back to eating it. And, like, is it gonna make me throw up? I don't know. We're eating it. What happens next? They need to somehow, you know, change this to be like, 
I don't, I don't know what it would be, but... I, I'm not buying that this is a brilliant, <laughs> brilliant response on their part. I think that uh, the fact that the one thing that Soylent needs to avoid is like, yeah, we have this chemical food that's like a replacement for food, basically. Uh, it can't make people sick. And so, like, I don't know. I, I think that... I think that what? there's a different way of going about it, but it's not really about the response. It's just about the fact that Soylent, a product you and I buy and eat regularly. Yeah, I have it every day for breakfast. Yeah, is like fucking people up. <laughs> That's really all I wanted to think about was like, huh, probably not going to eat that for it, a while. It made me think about like uh, my, in my like Uber rides to work, like I, I begin, I get car sick pretty easily. Mm-hmm. And now like seed of doubt, like, yeah. I'm like is you, it that did, I'm did so... Did you get nauseous recently? Wasn't that a thing? Yeah, like I get nauseous all the time and now I'm like, what I've been eating, I've been drinking a lot of social lately. <laughs> <laughs> doubt. This is what happened with like when Chipotle had that problem with the, you know, the, the uh, salmonella E. coli. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know what it was. We know we know that very well. Yeah. We, yes. We were trying to give. <clears throat> we, yeah. Continue. You have a larger point. <laughs> I mean, all I was saying was most people react the way I react, which is like Chipotle is making people sick. Got it. Don't need to know more. I don't need to know the details about like. Ty- Tyler and I this spent uh, a couple days trying to give away free burritos, like just the promise of free burritos to high school students to download our app. And the one question that 95% of them asked was, well, where's the burrito from? It's not from Chipotle, is it? And we'd be like, <laughs> no, nah, it's from somewhere else. Like, yeah. Good. You're standing in front of a Chipotle at the time. At, the time. Yeah, at one point we were, yeah. yeah. And there were protesters there, yeah. Yeah, and it took us a little time to realize what was going on. Did you know that uh, uh, there was research about, like, um, was it, uh, there was a John Oliver segment about this, about, uh, oh, God, did you see this most recent one? You gotta give us like I know, I know. It's like it, we'll there, there was yeah, yeah, two syllables. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was basically a scandal that happened about a product a while ago. The response from the industry was, "Well, only one percent of people get sick from it." Um, and it, it turns out it's cigarettes. A lot of people. Is it sugar? It was not sugar. This was like the '80s or the '90s. What the fuck was? I don't know. I don't know. But that, I that, that kind of reminds mm-hmm. me of like the self-driving car problem, right? Like. Mm. Yes, it's way safer. Yes, there will still be some accidents up going until then. But the mainstream reaction will be, oh my god, Robot autopilot, right? the guy put it on autopilot and died? Like, oh my, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Like, yeah. my aunt just bought a Tesla, and that was like her number one thing was like, how do I make sure I never go on autopilot? I heard people die. And then, like, she's just going to, she's like, the word, <laughs> like, we're going to see a spike in uh, the search term for Terminator 2. Uh, like, every time there's a death of somebody, <laughs> they're going to be like, Terminator 2, Skynet, like, that's going to be the spike on Google search. So, whatever the arbitrage is there to take advantage of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that will happen for a little while, and then we'll get to the point where it's at such sufficient traction and it's happening at a non-trivial level that we won't care. Yeah. Just like we don't care right now that 300,000 people die every exactly. year. It's right? like- but in the beginning, if that's going to be the problem. That's the same conversation. My stepdad is a total gearhead. He builds cars for a living. And even he, I was like, you're going to get a Tesla? He goes, I'll get the second one. It's, it's okay, well, why didn't you get the second one? Well, I don't want the thing that's not working, that's busted for people, and like, I'm, I'm legitimately worried that it might, I might die in the car. Like, you're not gonna die in the car. You have a better chance of dying right now in your car that you built out of steel, not even aluminum, and there's not even like airbags. He's like, yeah, 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 but they're like building software or whatever. Yeah, let's, not, let's not let the facts get in the way of my, my exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, this is what I wanted to say. This is uh, in the 80s, or the, it was the 90s, the op- doctors started prescribing opiates. And uh, it was Percocet, Oxycontin, and Vicodin, oh, and they geez. blew up. So before there, there used to be this um, opi, opi, uh, opiophobia or something like that uh, in doctors that was like, we don't want to prescribe those things. People might get addicted. The literal concern was addiction. And then the pharmaceutical industry comes out in the '90s and it's like, hey, guess what? Actually, these things work really well, and uh, we'll give you a lot of money. Here's we'll a give you some like, sushi exactly. for lunch. Yeah. Did you know you could go to Cabo for prescribing this? Oh my god! <laughs> and then all of a sudden, these doctors are just throwing this stuff out there, and then people actually get addicted. And then they start using heroin because they they can't even get enough painkiller feeling out of the painkiller medication. And so the opiate, the pharmaceutical industry comes out, and they have like. Hi, I'm I'm white doctor, you know, in front of the camera. He's like, it's actually fine. Only not even quite one percent of people get addicted to opiates, so don't worry about taking opiates. Like, that's fucking insanity. This is where one percent of a million people could get addicted to opiates and then do heroin. 
Yeah, this is where John. Oliver, <laughs> Are you nuts? This is where John Oliver sort of does the analogy. I haven't seen the second, but he always does it like um, that kind of number. He goes, well, if one glass of milk out of a hundred was goat cum, would you drink like would you drink a random glass of milk? Like no, <laughs> right? 